All right, in the last video, we were subbing in some values for x, y, and z and solving the problem. So this time, I'm going to give you some equations, and I'm going to suggest that we use a certain number. And I want you to tell me if that number, when placed in the equation correctly, will that be a solution to the problem? So let's take a look at the first one. x plus 7 equals 15. I want you to sub in for x a 6. And let's find out if the 6, when put in x's place, will solve this equation, if it will be a true statement. x is 6, 6 plus 7 equal 15. No, 6 plus 7 does not equal 15. So 6 is not a solution for this particular problem. Our next one, we have 1 fifth x equal 3. Now remember that 1 fifth Hook to an x is like one-fifth times x. And this time, I'd like to use 15 for x. So let's write our problem. One-fifth times 15, and since we're doing a fraction, I'll put over one. Why? Because every whole number, when written in fraction form, has a one underneath it. Okay, and then I'll multiply. One times 15 is 15 and 5 times 1 is 5. That's an improper fraction, so when you divide 15 divided by 5, it does equal 3. So yes, the 15 was a solution to this problem. In case you're wondering, yes, I could have done cross-outs on this and made it smaller, so let's go back and I'll show you what I'm talking about. I know from multiplying fractions you usually do that, I would have normally done 5 into 5 is 1, and 5 into 15 is 3, so 1 times 3 is 3. Either way you do it, it's still a solution to this particular problem. All right, and on this next one, we have 2x plus 4 equal negative 8. I would like you to try a negative 6 in this equation to see if it will equal to a negative 8. You ready? All right, let's do 2 times a negative 6, because 2x means 2 times negative 6, plus 4 equal negative 8. Well, 2 times a negative 6 is a negative 12. Negative 12 plus 4 equals a negative 8. Well, if you remember addition of integers, when you have a positive and a negative, you're going to take the difference between the two and then go with the sign of the greater 1. So the difference is 8, and uh, there is more negative. So the answer to this is a negative 8, and negative 6 did work in the place of x. So I'm going to have to say yes on that one. Yes, uh, negative 6 is a solution for that equation, okay? Now, I'm going to erase this, and then I've given you some algebraic expressions in, in sentence form or statement form, and I want us to read them carefully and turn them into algebraic expressions, okay? All right, let's take a look at the first one. The very first one is the sum of 6 and 7. Well, remember that sum means addition, so in this particular case, the sum of 6 and 7 would be what? 6 plus 7, that is correct. On our next one, unless you know what quotient means, we're going to be stuck here. Quotient is just a word for division. It's the answer to a division problem. So if they're asking for the quotient of 15 and a negative 5, then there are a couple ways to write it. We can say uh, 15 divided by a negative 5, or we could say 15 divided by negative 5, or we could even say 15 divided by negative 5. Any of those would be fine for that sentence, okay? I'll just keep the first one up here. All right, let's go to the third one. The difference of 12 and 7. The difference of 12, I'll say, and 7. 
Now, what does difference mean? Difference is the answer to a subtraction problem. So the difference of 12 and 7 would be 12 minus 7. I don't want to solve any of these. I just want to set them up and write them in algebraic form based on what I'm reading. All right? The product of 7 and a negative 4. Product means what? Remember, factor times factor equal product. So we're talking about multiplication here. All right, product of 7 and a negative 4. That could be 7 times a negative 4. It could be 7 times a negative 4. It could be 7 hugging a negative 4. Uh, it could be 7 times a negative 4. All those are different ways to write multiplication. So any of those would be fine for this statement. I'll just keep the first one. 7 times a negative 4. All right, let's look at number 5. 7 subtracted from a number. Now, this is the one that really messes people up because you're used to writing in the same order that you read. Now, I'm going to write that for you the way it reads, but I don't think that we're going to be happy with the answer. 7 subtracted from a number. 7 subtracted from a number, and we'll say a number is x here. Well, that doesn't say 7 subtracted from a number. That says a number is being subtracted from 7. So that was going to be incorrect. Just because we read it one way doesn't mean it has to be written in that exact order. Let's try that again. If 7 is being subtracted from a number, then I would think that you would need the number first. So let's put our number, which is x, and we're going to subtract 7. That would probably be a better answer, don't you think? All right. Let's go for number six. Twice a number decreased by five. Twice a number, and we'll let the number be x again. Twice a number decreased by five. Well, what do you think? Maybe twice a number, because 2x does mean twice a number, and decrease means to subtract. Twice a number decreased by five. That looks good. Okay, let's try this one. This is a pretty easy one. 8 is not equal to 4. You remember your signs from several video um, lessons back? 8 is not equal to 4. That was easy too. Now let's get a little bit, let's get a little bit heavier here. 4 times a number is greater than 12. So we're going to use our inequality sign here. How do we say 4 times a number? There you go. 4 times a number is greater than 12. Is greater than 12. Remember, as we read left to right, the mouth is open, which says greater than. 4 times a number is greater than 12. Good job. Okay, watch out for this one. Twice the sum of 8 and a number. You've got to be very careful on this one twice the sum of 8 and a number. I can't double the sum until I write what kind of problem. Sum means addition. So I'm going to have to write 8 plus a number, which can be n for number, but we've been using x, so I'll go 8 plus x. Now, it's twice the sum. So I'm going to have to put this in parentheses because the sum of this needs to be multiplied by 2. So here's a good example of twice, here's the sum, twice the sum of 8 and a number. So that would be a good setup for that. All right. And on number 10, 4 increased by 6 less than or equal to the quotient of 50 and 2. Now, if you can handle this one, you can probably handle anything that might come on that test at the end of this, um, this module. Okay, let's see. 4 is being increased by 6. That sounds like an addition, doesn't it? 4 increased by 6. Now, we need a less than or equal sign. Okay, here it comes. Less than or equal to. Now, remember what quotient. What's quotient? Quotient is division. So we can say the quotient of 50 and 2. We can say the quotient of 50 and 2 by putting the first number on top if we're going to write it as a fraction. Or 
we could also say the quotient of 50 divided by 2. Either way is perfectly fine. So we have now written all of our sentences in algebraic expressions. Good job.